Hello, I'm Robert Semro, your host for A Moment with a Pet Insider. I have got to say, it is a pleasure to have Charlotte Reed. We've had you on the radio show. Now we have you here in person. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. We're so glad to be here with you. Now, you are truly a pet lifestyle expert. You do a lot of things in the pet world. How did you get started? Well, this is really funny. I was a lawyer. A lot of people don't know that. I worked for Bankers Trust and I came home one day and my dog walker was dressed in a bespoke outfit, dancing around my apartment. Actually, he was voguing <laughs> and my dogs were sitting on the bed watching and he was dancing. I always tell everybody, so I don't know if he looked better in the outfit than I did. So, so it was kind of one of those aha moments. So those aha moments where you said, you know what? I'm gonna dive deeper into all of this. And when you set out to do it, what really was the passion behind it? What drove you where you said, these are the things that I can get behind and that I'm passionate about? Well, I think for me, the whole idea of having someone come into your home and violate your trust was a huge issue for me. So for me, what I wanted to do was I wanted to start, at first, a pet care service that was corporate style. So my company was called, at the time, Two Dogs and a Goat Incorporated. <laughs> So two dogs were my two Cocker Spaniels and I was the Capricorn goat. Okay. Right. So I ended up getting my first clients only from vet referrals. So I wanted a very chic but professional service. So a lot of people consider me the grandmother of modern day dog walking because we were the, one of the first people to put rates on the internet and I was the first person to service hotels in the country. Okay. Yeah. Wow. New York City. Now you've got some great stories and you do a lot of speaking. What have been some of the most memorable moments that you've had in the pet world so far? Well, I think one of the most memorable moments happened recently. I got really inspired by photos and just stories of individuals in Moore City, Oklahoma, when they had the recent tornado. Sure. And I decided to really mobilize a lot of pet manufacturers that I know. So I got on the phone at six o'clock in the morning. I started calling Oklahoma Humane. I ended up getting Christy Counts, the director, on the phone. And I said, hi, I'm Charlotte Reed. I'm a pet trendologist. I want to help you. Obviously, you don't need me to come to Oklahoma, but I'm sure you need things like leashes and collars and anxiety shirts and tags and, and everything. And she said, I don't know what I need yet. So I said, let's just brainstorm and I'm going to get you some stuff right away. So I called 20 great companies in the pet industry and right away they said, yes, Charlotte, we'll donate everything. That's great. And then one company said, how do you know what they need? I said, because I got on the phone, I made the phone call, I talked to the director. So this is straight from the director's mouth what we need. And people really came to task with that. People really wanted to help. Because you know, when you have these disaster situations, sometimes the facilities are damaged, but you have all of these people looking for their dogs, or dogs are hurt, dogs are injured. And with an influx of dogs like that, shelters have two problems. The first problem is that they have to make sure that all of the dogs they already have can be taken out of the shelter and sent other places. So that's when you have the mobilization of something like um, the ASPCA and other large organizations like North Shore come in. Right. And then from there, then they start collecting dogs and bring them to the shelter. And of course they need medical care and medical attention as well as sometimes just a place for people to leave their dogs temporarily until they have housing once again. Absolutely, and, and it just drives home the point of being prepared for anything that can happen. We do it for ourselves as humans. We need to make a bigger effort doing that for pets. Well, absolutely, and I'll tell you something that was very amusing that happened in September. As you know, September is National Preparedness Month. So one of my pitches for the month, because I do a lot of television, was that particular pitch. No producer in the country took that pitch. I pitched it a week before Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> And then after, everyone was calling, Charlotte, can you come back? I remember that pitch that you sent. But I think it's really, really important. We consider pets to be part of our lives. Right. So we want to be prepared in any type of situation. And you know, there's so many, it's not only natural disasters like tornadoes, there's also things like fire we need to consider. Absolutely, anything can happen these days. Absolutely. You have to leave in an instant. If you're not prepared for it, that's when bad things happen. Absolutely, and so many people don't even know where their leash and collar are. Uh, it's, a, it's a great point. Now, you also have another great charity effort that you're spearheading, let's talk about that. Well, one of the things I like to do is, 
I really like to get involved in local communities. I do a lot of TV around the country in Philadelphia, Chicago, San Diego, Las Vegas, and I really like to work with a lot of local charities to help them, um, not only with product donations, but also to help get their dogs adopted. So generally when I do a segment in a city like Chicago, for example, I work with um, Chicago Paws. Okay. So we try to help get their dogs adopted, and if the shelter needs any type of product, we try to get it for them. So that, you know, sure. it's because these shelters today, a lot of successful shelters, really are great places. They're no longer those dirty, depressed places. They really, a lot of shelters right. work on over 40% volunteer. I mean, 40% volunteers. So, you know, if I can help, I, lo I really do. And it's funny because I used to write a check, maybe do some hands-on. And then last year, Mike Arms, who is the president of Helen Woodward, had this amazing, amazing um, weekend workshop. And shelter workers came all over from the country. And the last day, we were all sitting there crying and talking about how amazing the conference was. And I said to Mike, and I'm not a crier, I started crying. I said, I can do more. I can do more. I have a platform. I can do more. I really want to do more than write a check or just go walk a dog randomly or show up in an event. So right. this is my way okay. of, of contributing. And right. I'm so happy to do it because I get to help these wonderful dogs get adopted. I get to, you know, one story of a dog in Chicago, he had had a heart condition. Guess what? He went to a guy with a heart condition. <laughs> he there saw that as something like symbiotic or something. I love that. I love that. And I also like that you started doing the things that we can all do, and that is just going down and even walking a dog at the local shelter makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. You can walk a dog. So maybe you don't have $100, but you might have $5 to give every month. You might have linens, toys. You might have an old camera or computer. And you know, so many dogs really need to have the best picture possible to get adopted. Absolutely. So those are the things that you can, that you can do. Call your local shelter, volunteer any special services that you have. So for example, you could bring your crew down and highlight a few dogs and you know what the, the programs at the shelter are doing. So everyone is capable of doing something and that's what's really exciting. Absolutely. Well, I want to make sure that people know where they can get more great information from you. What's the best place to do that? Well, I always tell people everyone's on social media. Go to social media. I'm on Twitter as Charlotte Reed. Facebook, I'm Pet Trendologist. And I think we have a date next month. I'm going to be on the radio with you. We do. We do. And yeah. we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks we really so appreciate it. Thanks so much for having it. me. Give me a kiss, baby. Mm. There we go. Well, wait now. Mm. Oh, there we go. <laughs>